again, not wanting to repeat anything anyone has said. It, it, it's incredibly frustrating uh, to hear continuously the same message time after time. I don't know what it's going to take. I mean, we keep saying the same thing over and over. Uh, it's, it, it, it's become now uh, something that I think everybody knows. And so I, I think it's just the refusal of doing it perhaps is the case. Let me cite something that uh, Investigator Bias have brought up to me yesterday as we chatted about these conversations during these briefings because they seem to now become white noise to people. Remember the seatbelt laws. At a certain point, you know, people said, I, I well, why wear seatbelts? Why? I mean, that's stupid. I, I refuse to do that. That is not something I want to do. You know what? It saves lives. And now people, without a doubt, always wear their seatbelts for the most part. And it's proven to do just that. And so I, we struggle with this. We, we, we just don't know what else to say because we've said it all. We'll continue to say it, I guess. But if you're not going to take personal responsibility, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take personal offense uh, to me against uh, my own personal uh, self and my family if you are not taking those precautions. Because I guess that's the only way uh, this is going to have to uh, change. Because it's frustrating the fact that we're putting in all these measures. There's people working day in, day out, 24 hours a day, risking their lives for you. And I'm not one of those. I'm not in that space. I'm not even claiming to be one of those people. But there's people working in these hospital settings and other settings as first responders because people are just refusing to do simple things. And that's the frustrating part. I'm being paid to do a job and I'm, I'm doing what I think I need to be doing on my part. But it's sad to see that people making these very bad choices are putting people at risk that should not be at risk. I remind everybody there's other things that happen on a daily basis. Steve Landine just mentioned right now that there's a problem at the morgue. There's a problem at the morgue because quite honestly, there's there's other things that happen in our community on a daily basis to begin with. COVID is just one other factor that's compounding our issues. And so remember the hospitals are contending on other things as well. They have other issues that they're dealing with. There's people unfortunately that continue to, to suffer from other ailments. People still break their arms and legs, suffer from cancer, have liver problems, have babies. I mean, we still have those issues. And for us to add this compoundment on, on issues when we just don't need it, I, 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 again, I, I, I just don't know what else to say other than it, it, it's a refusal for people to, to not see this. But I can tell you this, we're going to continue doing what we think we need to be doing. Uh, going uh, as far as we need to, to go and doing what we have to do. Uh, I can say on, just like the mayor said, with the eight liners and beagles, uh, fair warning, we're gonna be out there and not just those spaces too, and other uh, spaces too. So not not just them, but the restaurants and, and, and the capacity issues and other places as well. So uh, we will be out there in force, working with our enforcement officials to make sure everybody is complying with of uh, the rules and regulations that we all know uh, you should be following as well. So we'll be working uh, with our officials on that. And I did want to say something also in respect to schools, because I wanted to clarify something. So uh, all respect can go to each uh, body. One, the respect can go to our health authority and the respect can go also to our school districts. I think what, is, what has happened, and, and the governor has clarified it as well, the authorities for the school districts to make their own Choices, yes, lies within the school boards, without a doubt. What we've attempted to do, what our what our health authority has attempted to do, is make these these decisions at their request as well to be able to help so that they can plan forward how their schools uh, would be most safe. And so, what we are being told now, obviously, is that the school boards have all authority, and we entirely respect. From day one, we said we respect school boards. We respect the governor and his abilities. What we've attempted to do through our health authority is to say, we wanna be a part of that conversation to help you make those decisions. Unfortunately, now we have to go to that very fine edge of a crisis to be able to jump in there and assist. And that's where we're gonna be very close to the schools to be able to have to mitigate issues. 
And that's what we're going to work with them uh, very closely to see how this will roll out. Obviously, we're not going to jump into their uh, um, anywhere close to where we shouldn't be with, within their bounds of authority with the school districts. But now we are being told that we uh, cannot be uh, preemptive in, in, in many calls because, as you asked the doctor, he is telling us right now, we are not in a good place. It doesn't look like we're going to be in a good place uh, very soon. And so it makes sense to say, in a month from now, we're probably going to be struggling. So it makes sense that our schools are probably going to be struggling too. Uh, obviously, now with, with the mandate from the governor and TA, uh, the school board will have to make that call. And so we'll probably end up getting close to school time and having to make adjustments and our health authority would step in and, and make those calls. And so everybody preserves their own authorities and our, our health authority will step in when, when he needs to step in. And so we'll, we'll provide that, that mandate. Um, and, and I do want to say, though, as things need to progress, just like life continues, we just I just welcome 10 new cadets to our police force. They just started this morning. So welcome to them, 10 uh, young men. Uh, it was embarrassing when I asked when they graduated. Some of them, you know, when they started talking about the 2015, 2016 graduation dates, I was like, man, I, I really shouldn't have asked that because that makes you feel that much older. But congratulations to those 10 their families, because to be honest, again, that glimmer of hope that there's still life that continues, that we still need to keep plugging away at this, and that there is uh, an end to this at one point, and, and we still must remain with that hope at the end, and they carry that forward with, with us too. So uh, congratulations to them. Uh, we'll soon see them out there uh, in the, in the uh, training uh, cadet uh, course. <clears throat> 